16 Group B Day 2 Outsiders versus FTW. It's an absolute scorcher outside today, chat. But we're more interested in the action right now at the A round. And it's quick in a flit here. He's taking a lot of contact, and KST just charging up. Has the lion's share of the squad behind him. This is a classic. Oh, and flit on the repeat. Takes down Sedona. The flash is good. The fights keep coming, and flits grabbed a second, picking up where he left off yesterday. Yeah, he was looking very good indeed, and KST will have to step up at this point, which he absolutely is. He actually had the man advantage here, but not for long. Fame will steal it away. Two versus two, and then it's Attempt at the bomb plant is coming through at least. Kick up on towards a boost box, and the smoke will at least allow a little bit of movement here from the Portuguese squad. Did Diaz will take care of Kiest, and uh, at this point, we've got fame left. And that should be all she wrote, but we'll see. He's actually pulled it <laughs> the off. The kit's there. And he actually has got the kit. It's all worked out. Fantastic work from fame, and that's going to be FDW giving the round up as uh, outsiders fend them off on the A-bomb Yeah, side. couldn't fight together right there. And Fame, he's really sharp. He's a bit of a fun fact, and one that really doesn't tell you too much about him as a player, but tells you how much Counter-Strike he grinds. He is the uh, he has the second most ELO in all of Facer. Monacy has the first. Oh, Monacy's got the first. I was going to say, who's got the first? Yeah, Fame, right. Fame's number two, just to young Buck Monacy there. And look, I, I was watching some of Fame's stream. He was playing a little bit before they headed over here to uh, ESL Pro League Season 16, and he's sharp, right? He is very, very sharp. If you're looking for somebody to try and replicate what your kinder would bring to the team, might be one of the names at the top of the list here. But Flit's been having an absolute stunner of a time already throughout. Well, Day one go. was pretty easy, I think, for outsiders, though they steamrolled big. Yeah, they absolutely did. And uh, FTW, similar sort of result, but in the other direction. Didn't have the, the best start to the group against FaZe Clan, but uh, hoping to bounce back in this force by in the second. Towards a B bomb, so we go, and it's Fame, the hero of the previous round, to step up once again. He'll find Aristose and the cross towards the bomb site somewhat successful. They have a bit of presence here, trying to hold behind the default boxes, oh. but Fame and Flip just mowing them down here. They haven't even got close to a plan at this stage. Sudodo trying to raise himself above the bomb site, but uh, I think his days might be numbered here. Same story for Didias as he receives a maximum damage grenade there. Lands at his front door steps, and the door is slammed shut. Uh, Two -zero. Everybody dead and no plan on a force by round is what we would consider nightmare territory early yeah, game. That's uh, fair. That's not where you want to be. You get the plant on the pistol, you put yourself in a winnable situation against, against fame. You want to bite back quite quickly into the next with a bit of a B explode, some nice jump flashes deep through that window. And now you're sitting here on an eco. Now, they have invested in five HE grenades. Two options for this, either off the beam in middle or right. up towards the sandbag on A ramp. If James, Kick It, Flit want to get a little bit aggressive. Well, it looks like it might be the latter here, Chad, as they make their way towards the A ramp. And indeed, the nades will be flung out. It's actually towards the scaffolding, I believe. And they're also towards the A ramp as well. So lots of damage being inflicted. A bombardment of grenades coming through. And we'll see whether this is actually going to be working out in any sense of the matter for FTW, but it uh, doesn't look like it. Flip will just be lighting them up here. Kicker joins in the fragging as well, and just one Glock remaining. One lonely Glock, but to be fair, they managed to get a kill. James down to 2 HP, and there's the pile of bodies there waiting on the scaffolding. They went divide and conquer with the util there, exactly. right? It wasn't just one position. We're not just going to dump all five nades into one location, but Sudodo is going to be falling not too far where his brother and died. He has crept the way out, and will get swung on here by Norbert, and it's looking good. Now, Norbert is a name that will probably not get too much shine in this team because we're going to be talking a bit more about the individual prowess of the likes of Flit, Jame on that AWP. I think Kicker and Fame, in terms of what they can bring aim and, and multi-kill-wise, is going to be fantastic here. But Norbert feels like a bit of a jack of all trades. Seems like a bit of a smarter player, but he'll be using that Mac 10 or that MP9. Bit of a Sanji, perhaps? He'll, well, I don't think he's going to be on the full exactly. uh, recycling <laughs> I should duties. have been a Sanji, you know? Kind of some Sanji vibes, perhaps. Well, we'll see if he can bring at least a little bit of the Sanji energy, because I know yeah. a lot of people out there miss Sanji. I do as well. I think he was a great asset to us. I hope he's uh, doing well, and we'll see him return on point. But uh, either way, Chad, it's going to be the first full buy here from FTW. Probing towards the A-bomb site, as oh. you would expect, and this battle towards the A-ramp will start here. Flit has spotted one player trying to sneak his way up, but uh, the DS decides to pull back. They've definitely shaken that uh, slow and grueling reputation the outsiders have had for the longest time. I, I think this team is trying to be a bit more explosive and exciting in a lot of their plays here. Kicker wants to re-peak the smoke, has to be very careful about the one way, but oh. never mind. Flit and Kicker both chime in. This A-ramp crawl, it's been slow before it can even get started. Yeah, a kill through the smoke there as well, and uh, not sure there's much more to be said about round number four here. Three AK remain, a couple of smokes, sure, but they would need the CTs to give Fragged away for free, and I just don't think that's going to happen. At this point, batten down the hatches, make sure you've established crossfires, and that's exactly what they're doing now. And uh, we haven't got a Jame AWP yet, but uh, 
not necessarily acquired on Vertigo Chow. Just seeing a lot of top orbers move more to a rifle mentality, uh, most notably Zywu on this map. Yeah, he was doing uh, wonders with Apex when we got to cover them during Group A, just absolutely mauling any of the A ramp maneuvers with that M4. But here's Kick It, silently down the ladder, but quickly. Maybe something all of you should try and practice at home. Need to be solid I on the keyboard it. too. I'm still crouching at the ladder. I just feel like I don't trust myself to do it properly. Yeah, it's all about the taps. You yeah. want to tap, tap, tap. And well, here's an example. This M4 in the back, still trying to work out where it came from, but KST, a highlight of yesterday, will dispatch of Kick It, but it feels like they're just going to waltz on into their death. 16 seconds on the clock. Agile and, well, just Agile now. Last man standing and four to find. I think a kill's available here potentially. Not quite. Decent efforts, but uh, another very clean and concise round there from the outside is 4 0. On the CT side here, yeah, it's starting to look a little bit troublesome. Uh, in terms of cash, maximum loss bonus achieved at this point at so $3,400 per player on top of any residual from the previous round. So you're looking at about $3,500 to $3,900 total. Enough for Galil's AKs and uh, bare bones utility, but is it worth it when you're 4 0 down? Do you need this round at this point? Is it better to build up the reserves and look towards maybe a partial buy here? Yeah, I think go for the partial buy, get a little bit of utility. We already saw in second round of the game they had a big explode strategy. If they have any more options like that, that they could try rifle through early here or take some pace out of the game normally just sit back and wait for outsiders to use all that util see if they want to get aggressive and pounce late but either way not feeling well, there's a lot of confidence out of ftw early here we had endpoint last week they were in a similar situation but a few more household names in that team i would say that's fair yeah it's uh, definitely an unknown quantity with FTW. We know the, the handy team, like uh, the video highlighted, the conference stage is no joke. To even get here is a challenge upon itself. My biggest issue with that conference stage is how there's a lot of teams. MIBR is another one, right? Uh, FTW is an example of this. They have different rosters from when they qualified in the conference. True. So it's, it, it's not even about the players getting that opportunity. It's about the ones that earn this position. Yep. They're not even here. So it's, we practically have a whole new team in front of us right now for FTW because roster swap, I think it happened in July with Store. Uh, with Saw and uh, FTW, so the change up happened back then. That's, uh, this round not going much better for them. I think they're dispatches of Stododo, and uh, it's another day in the office here, picking up the kills one by one. I dare say the last kill will be coming in momentarily. There, the outside is FTW really need to start causing some damage as Stododo picks up the AWP. You assume he'll take that towards the A ramp at the start. And uh, this is the best possible chance to get those sort of picks. This is where outsiders get comfortable. They're maybe over peeking towards the ramp and uh, going for these spans a little bit too aggressively. Okay, well, in the first five rounds of play, there's a total of six kills for FTW. That needs to shift That's fair. drastically. That's fair statement. Good observation there, I, I would say. I, it's, it's one of the things, right? At the end of the day, you can have all the strats, the util, the timing, the trick. Gotta kill them. But you need to shoot them, right? Yep. That's the most important part of all of this. Yeah, that's what it all comes down to at the end of the day, really. Oh, Ooh, the grenade. That was tidy. Bounced straight on the noggin right there. So Agile down to 50 points of health before getting into any action just yet. The Dia's taken a lick as well and just stalling them out across the map here. Outsiders have gone for a 2-2-1 two, two, setup. Yeah, just changing things up. Feeling they've maybe established themselves firmly in this A ramp. There won't be too much in terms of T pushback. They might be exploring their options elsewhere on the map. So stacking two towards middle. A nice idea, but Jamie will leave Norbert alone for now and go back into the rotation position as he heads back towards A. Now, traditionally, if you get this control, you want to be getting a bit of a boost up here, try and apply some pressure towards that B bomb site. Now, James dipped on back to re-smoke deep towards the ramp, and they're actually hedging still quite heavily over towards A. Now, we can see the regroup towards this B bomb site with roughly 50 seconds on the clock. Fame doesn't have a lot of utility here. We'll need his teammates to back him up. Yeah, it's uh, a dicey spot, but uh, he has been flashed over and going for the spam, and that's a lovely opening kill. Norbert and Jane backing up at this stage as well. Oh, oh the double kill with the Molotov as well. That's fantastic work here. The B defense is strong as you like, and only one player remaining, Stododo, on zero kills. Save, mate. Get out of there. And that's they it. Well, they didn't even see anyone there, actually. They got yeah. spammed Molotov before they even saw a CT. Yeah, and I said Fame didn't have the Uto. He didn't need any. Well, there's Stododo's orb. It will strike, but the position's given up now, and as he's slowly getting cornered, it's not long for this world. Kick it on the flank. Another shot from Sudoto will land, but this is all a bit of a consolation here. It's still very unlikely. He wins the round. He dives into Kick It's crosshair. The frag confirmed and a 6 0 scoreline. Yeah, a rough one there. Didn't even get a look. And as you said, only six kills coming into that round and didn't even see any defensive players whatsoever. Locked out by the utility, spammed through the wooden boards. A double kill with the incendiary. I'd love to see how that looked from their point of view. Uh, this is the, the opening name. grenade yeah. as well. 
that's already uh, demoralizing. <laughs> and needless to say, that one as well. And Norbert just mowing them down with fame here. Absolutely fantastic work. It is locked in. They didn't even get past the steps. It's a very demoralizing situation. You're not even getting close to a kill let alone a buy in the follow-up rounds. And they weren't worried about A at all. Jamin just dropped that deep ramp smoke. They had a yeah. good idea. Fame was already studying the posture. It's like, boys, it's not going to be A. Let's let's at least search for information over towards B. And another timeout called to it. So I, I think the question is, because we know that FaZe yesterday against FTW, that's the best team in the world versus a bit more of an unknown quantity. Yep. Outsiders coming into this were one of the cusp teams. Now with them picking up the win against Big, that has put outsiders inside the chat for the top three of sure. this group, right? The, the only other name alongside of them now is going to be G2. And we have G2 versus Big later today. If G2 win that, then things are starting to iron out quite nicely here for the top three of FaZe, G2 outsiders. ESL Pro League. We do expect some sort of an upset That's at true. some point, right? We, we have to. The recipe dictates it has to come. So a beat pop here, Chad. It's I like this flash. Spy. It's yeah. a jump throw instead. So it's good. Oh, oh, man. Oh, oh, oh. We're going to have to check the util damage here, aren't yeah. we? This is oh. just absolute farming. Here. It's a mauling, Chad. This is an absolute mauling. Nothing can be done. The B steps, they try the luck once again. It's a very similar result. Bombarded by the airstrike of outsiders. There's absolutely nothing that can be done. The HE grenade just looking too strong for them. And uh, the utility is relentless at this stage. Wow. They've been absolutely cooked here at the bottom. Bamboozled. Bamboozled for sure. As uh, we'll see them try to boost up here. Um, really nothing to be said about this round once more. Like they, they've got a kill in return. That was towards fame, but... Uh, We'd already done enough damage at another <laughs> AG kill. Are you kidding me right now? Well, Look how much damage he did to KSD I, as well. I'm having a look right now. Norbert just went from, uh, I think, about 187 utility damage to 330. So he's doing a lot of util work here, Norbert. Jack of all trades, master of none. Still better than a master of one. One, right. No, wait, it's master of none. Yeah. Jack of all trades. Yeah, I, I did a cassade there. <laughs> I was wondering to, where to go with this one. He's already said the phrase that. correctly. So, yeah, and then he stumbled at the end. Because the people only normally say the start, right? A jack of all trades, yeah. a master of none. It's like an of... idiom, right? So once everyone is aware of the idiom, so yeah. you only have to say after. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Well, now um, I look like the idiot. You did stick the landing, but it is, uh, it's only day two of Ruby. Plenty of more opportunities, Chad. Well, I I'm trying to bring some comedic relief to what is looking hey, like a very on. dire situation. Hey, come on, a CT side. Sure, FW picked this map, but it's not over yet. I'm sure they'll get the first kill. No, well, that's actually not going well at all. Fame and Flit will be mowing them down here, and it continues to be a huge problem. The crossfire is spectacular from Kickup as he manages to pick up another double here. And there it is in cruise control, Chad. Um, difficult to really analyze this one. They're going grouped up, five-man executions, and then it's getting not even past the initial choke points. So the good thing is that you're looking at this outsider's team. They've always got the, the, the jab, right? The jab's right. there, but they've, they've got the hook to follow. They're mm -hmm. getting double kills. They're not, right. There's not one for one. It's, well, I'll take two. And if you take in two, that makes Counter-Strike pretty bloody easy. Right. Uh, trading efficiently is something that FTW are going to have to start working on here. They do get this ramp control, and then they all die. Uh, but they got the ramp control. I don't know. Would you call that control? It didn't look very controlled to me. Well, maybe the outsiders gave them the control exactly. and then took it away. That's, that's what I think. They feel like, yeah, we'll just change, change the setup this time and uh, lure them into a self. Oh, dear. Oh, God. It's actually oh, getting worse. The grenades are actually getting worse and worse, aren't they? They're getting melted, grenaded, got them aside. It's like they're getting into that kind of like fun casual mode now. It's easy. Sound. Looks like they're really enjoying themselves. I'm envisioning like Terminator in that like vat slowly melting. Have you seen Terminator? I've seen both of them, yeah. Terminator 2, Judgment Day, yeah, I believe. So you, you, see him, yeah. you see him melting. The thumbs up as he goes down. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's what I'm envisioning right now with FTW. Well, I don't think it'd be a thumbs up, at least. I think it'd be a, <laughs> yeah, a thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'd be enjoying this one. It wouldn't be uh, a somber send-off. It'd be more like, well, what but the But I mean, practicing happened? their names, Henry. Uh, Jill. Arasdose. Well, it's difficult to say the names because they're not killing anyone, Chad. That's the problem right now. Um, I would say, let's slow it right down. Let's go for some mid control. What, you and me or them? I would say, well, we can do it later for sure. But I feel like right now, let's just slow the game down. It's like, allow the utility to be exchanged and uh, maybe explore options elsewhere. But that's exactly what the CTs want you to do. We've seen them adjust their setups to be one step ahead of that. For now, though, Arasdose at least looking towards middle. This is more of a default stance. They're not committing at the very start of the round. The fame with full steps control here. That is a problem. But here we go. Exploring towards middle. There are lots of uh, options that can be granted with basic utility. A smoke they want a B split. And a Molotov towards a construction area. Try and flush them out. But uh, this is where it all begins Ooh. here. And it's an open kill. Jill takes down fame now. Let's look yeah. towards middle. Let's see what they've got here. So here's the smoke. Looking to take vision away from the elevator position. But uh, kick up. 
might be in front of it. Doesn't feel like they've had too many openings, so that's nice to see one. This mid round's gonna be very important. Smoke to block time. off vision from CT over towards Elevator as well. Norbert now knowing he's under pressure. Aradonse through the smoke. He's actually found Yo. the gap straight into the back of Kicket's head there. This one's looking explosive as they can turn to either bomb site. Norbert's no to back of the site. He's getting spammed away at, shipped away at, knocked on down. It's only a matter of time. Surely Norbert doesn't get anything done and 51 oh. floors down. Goes down with the clown shoes. That has to be the first round. Yeah, it has to be at this point. And a bit of a gimme there as he falls off the map. And uh, we will see the bomb plant come through. Uh, not the, the best way to give it away, but it still looks like a foregone conclusion with the standing anyway. So FTW managing to make their way towards B, like we said, more of a default setup there, working towards middle, the smoke down, the Molotovs. And instead of going up towards construction chat, they actually flash through and push the smoke there. There's a slight gap on the left to actually give them some vision. Worked out very well for them. You know who was doing a similar move to that? It was Endpoint with yeah, Kirby. Sure, right? that's they right. They were parking yep. Kirby in that smoke. He was aggressively getting flashed through. And remember, through. he was getting pre-fired towards the end of the tournament. Yeah. People were very aware of that. Yeah, people watched the demos. Exactly. It's funny that in modern yeah. Counter-Strike. Yep. Is, it is crazy, right? I think, you know, if you had some of these, these top-level pros, especially on the best teams in the world talking through just how often they either have to like fake they're doing the same move they've done in a previous game or maybe even just avoiding those type of moves altogether we're really starting to add these layers back in our day you could go to your position you could rinse and repeat the same three or four different ways of variation yep, true. people would watch the demos but it wouldn't be as drilled as it is today you don't have an entire team rocking up with a bloody novel an encyclopedia worth of data and oh there it is goodbye see you later guys peace out you can have this one Oh, I'm going to get the full replay here. This is where Valve should add the, uh, the parachute. <laughs> they should add the parachute to this, so at least you can you know, at least sail down. And Norbert's got a smile on his face there. It's a 9-1 lead. Definitely not the end of the world. Things are going fantastic, especially if they course correct here. Look at this. 10K, 9K, 9.4, 10. You've got Kicker. He's a little bit cheap firing. Well, he's the one in the dirt first. Flip from the sandbag. will defend under the pump right now. Drops the smoke and... Wants to get out of dodge. Nades are coming his way. And Ooh, be careful, careful now, Flair. We saw what happened with Norbert. You have to be careful. Well, these rounds are starting to look a lot more competitive, Chad. They're not just getting absolutely rinsed on the A ramp or the B steps. They're actually looking quite competitive here. Pushing the CTs back. We've got an even situation. You could even favor it towards FTW, considering the thinly spread CTs and low HP of Flit as well. They have got the AWP on Jame, however. And uh, he has been having a, a decent game, six and one. We haven't really had to talk about him too much, but these are the moments where he can really shine. Patrolling around the map with the sniper rifle rarely misses. And uh, for now, the ball making its way towards A ramp. Yeah, I think having this B lurk is fine here, but has to be a little bit more proactive for some information. Top of Scaf has been blocked. There's still time on the clock, and Fame's actually going to use this in his favor here. He might catch the perfect timing and lurk out the top of this behind the flip spot at one top move, ramp. And here comes Flit, the smoke. Sorry, not Flip, Fame. Flip is the one side. Fame's the one with the two kills and the round's done. It's all over. There's no way to even get the trade right here. Agil, he's trying to chase him down, but this one's already lost. 30 seconds left. Fame will get the final kill and uh, we'll make it 10. Very well done. Uh, like we said, that was a round looking quite uh, advantageous for FTW at one stage. Yeah, the three on three, but uh, the smoke goes down towards the top of scaffolding. Fame pushes through, easy double kill, and uh, the round grew to its logical conclusion. There is still one more buy for FTW, but here's the replay. All the time in the world you need. Lovely work of the incendiary as well. Forces Agile into the fight. You can see the frustration starting to show on their faces now. They want to turn up and play good <laughs> Counter-Strike, but... The contrast, but, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And uh, you can see that outside is having a lot of fun. They're relaxed, they're comfortable. FTW know they need to post at least two more rounds for this half to even be a conversation going forward. So James towards middle this time. I dare say he's got a, a frag, but a uh, nice little shoulder peek. Well, he's flush his position out and they'll be granted access towards middle. So like we said, plenty of options here. You normally want to be molotoving towards this uh, construction area, which will come through. And this Norbert getting all the information in the world. A kill, drops the bomb as well. And a nice bit of movement to get himself over towards the CT side as well. Okay, well, Jill with a bit of pressure alleviated towards B. James between a rock and a hard place. Bomb Norbert, down. that is the bomb dropped in perfect position here. James needed to hit a shot there to Dearson. Jill, they come alive. Sedona gets taken out. It's the two on two quite quickly here. The brawl, the biff, the fight keeps happening. It's split Ooh. over the top. Can't confirm. And now it's kick it in a one on two. He likes to win these, though. Known for a clutch or two, a lot of experience for kick up. Up against the Diaz and a Jill. The bomb has only just gone down. He has a kit, a smoke and two oh, flashes, nice. and no head. A Jill will hold strong, takes the aggressive angle, comes out on top. And that's the second round, though. He said a couple more would be good for FDW just to make this half competitive. 
and they're certainly delivering there. That was a difficult one to win. If they can get five, that's a great half, all things considered, well, right? Chad, I am just going to say the two times they've opted towards middle, they've got two rounds now. So yeah. uh, the B split seems to be the, the way forward, I would say. It's a good amount of pressure they're able to apply here. You can see a bit more confidence behind that utility usage in the in the skirmish. Yeah. Find those frags and some nice shots from Agil here, right? It, it, not easy shots to hit. Like they're obviously getting outclassed in the utility battle towards the A round for sure. B. So maybe let's just keep focusing on that area. Sure, show a bit of presence here. Just don't maybe fully commit four players up to take that huge duel. Uh, it just isn't working for you. Uh, they've got a better game plan than you on the CT yeah. side. Just to talk about the Utah a little bit more here. 350 on Norbert so far. 279 on Kicker. That says it all, doesn't 189 it? 189 on Flit. 124 on Jame. And then Fame has 71. I'm glad they're reading this, though. Like, let's just stick towards working boys. Maybe a boost up towards middle this time. Let's see what we can do. Let's uh, really twist the screws here. And this position that seems a bit weaker. They haven't got as much of a firm grasp here. Good spam, though, coming in from Norbert. There's the same Molotov smoke combo going for the beast split again. It's not broken. Don't fix it. Let's just keep pushing. See if we can find the opening frag once more. It's going to be Didias finding fame. Sododo cracks open the B bomb side now. And once again, Chad, it's the B split that's working out as FTW get the bomb down here. They've got a four versus three, and this might be a conversation where they actually have to save on the outsider's side. Yeah, money not looking great on that of Jame and Kick It. Everybody else is in a pretty decent position. Now, one of the keys for outsiders on a map like this is, historically, they have some geeky retake util. A couple of smokes, a couple of HEs, not a whole lot to work with here, and it looks like damage is name of the game. So a third round, very, very likely for FTW here is the bomb's already halfway gone, so they've really been able to crack this nut. The adjustment has to come from outsiders exactly. now. Exactly. That's my next point, though. So now this has worked out for you three times. You're aware of it. You know they're going to have to change things up, maybe have two players towards middle. We saw a bit of a stack from outsiders towards us. Well, they've got setups to deal with this, and just as I say that, that's actually very important kills there. As the money is starting to be drained, there's still quite a lot left. There's 10k on fame, for example. They, they're actually fine for the rest of the half. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized we're actually going into round number 14. So don't worry about that. But either way, FTW, they've got the option now. Do we go for something a bit more fast paced? Maybe go back to one of these uh, A executions and maybe even a faster B play with a couple of flashes, similar to what we saw on the pistol. Um, time will tell, but uh, a timeout for now. And uh, I assume this is technical. Oh, no, it's not. It's going to be outsiders for the, the first timeout. So that's. want to uh, salvage the half here. Yeah, what, a, what a, a change a few rounds will make. So just those mid splits so, towards B, making it very viable for them. I just got out my calculator, Henry, and as the teachers told us, we wouldn't have it in our pocket. Guess what? I did. Uh, I just added up all the utility damage right now for outsiders uh, so far on this CT half. Combined, it's over 1,000 on the utility damage. So just for all of you playing at home, that's 10 kills. <laughs> And it, it was evident. That, that's it? 10 we, kills. Do you remember the piles of bodies we were yeah. seeing at the A ramp and the B stairs? It makes sense. And they, were, they weren't getting shot. They were getting burnt to a crisp by incendiaries and blown up by the AGs. So, a great start for outsiders. They're starting to lose their grip somewhat. Remember, this is the pick of FTW. And again, here we go. So changing things up. They've shown a lot of presence towards middle now. So just going to go back to this A ramp. Meta and Flit. Oh, a missed jump. That actually is going to be a huge sound cue. You might have to just call the whole thing off. Ah, uh, they tried to back out of it, but it was the worst of both worlds. They're still like half committed Look at this. as Flit mows them down. He finds the bomb. Round done. And uh, yeah, maybe just stick to middle of the future, boys, because you've just been absolutely walloped here. Four kills to Flit's name, looking for the ACA. He's just got a deal to find. He's actually towards the B steps, coming through the connect. No, not the connect. He's actually going to T spawn. So. He might not get the ace. He might be denied, but still, what a fantastic give it, give effort. It, at least allow him, right? Everybody else sit back. Let Flit look for this. He wants it for the highlight reel. It's not going to be great for the editor. He will have to cut these however many seconds that will transpire yeah. uh, to make it a, a pretty looking ace. We normally like the five kills in about a five second window if possible, guys. If you professionals at home can keep that in mind. I'm not sure it was the prettiest ace either. Like, it was a nice ace for sure, but like the fact they made that sound cue is just like, we're here. Yeah, but we have music over the top. True, right? okay, We have some yes. flashing lights yep, and yep, stuff. Yep, that makes right? sense, actually. Right, and maybe you, when, when he gets this final kill, we could give it something, right? Give it the beans? The, I'll, I'll, I'll try and leave them with something here to edit over the top. Okay. So I'm just going to stay silent and, until he gets the final kill. And if James steals it, I'm done for the half. Um. Well, there's only one round left, so that should be all right. Adieu. Give it to him. He at least makes it possible. Oh! Absolutely monstrous ace right there. He locks up all five. That's perfect. You like that? Yep. Cut. All we'll right. make sure that cool. one goes in. We can fix that one. Edit yep. it together. Beautiful. Cool. Excellent one. So there it is. It's going to be, um, like I said, that jump from the T side. Really gave the game up to Diaz. Had full gray screen getting into that one as well. 
real nightmare fuel situation. As we said, it was the right idea, I think, to change things up and stop going towards middle. Would have liked to see a bit faster pace, though. Instead of being locked out and, uh, and back to business as usual by getting wrecked one by one at that air round. But either way, here we go then. Talk about fast pace. Jill trying to present some. Locked out by the grenades, though, once again. Didn't quite make it through the smoke. Takes a bit of damage there as uh, he listens out for sound cues. Spots the barrel, actually. Can't quite connect the dots. Oh, he's so close, but it will be Norbert to take him down. That's very unlucky. He got the information required, but still couldn't find the all-important headshot. It's going to be a five on four to kick things off for the outsiders here. Looking likely to be a 12-3 finish, but we'll see what they've got left in the tank. Galils, Deagles, and a final play towards the A bomb site. Smokes are down. A chance to plant the bomb, but I dare say Flip will have other ideas. Kick out mowing them down, but still not done yet. We are seeing at least two frags come in. And that's a great shot for Jane. That should tie things up here. De Diaz, a decent effort so far, but uh, he'll need a couple more where that came from. Still has a minute to work with Chad, but not meant to be. So 12-3 at the half. What do you make of that? Well, taking care of business. Outsiders looking hot. They were great yesterday against Big. They wanted to take this one as quick as they like, focusing on their matches they have for the rest of this group stage, because map number two feels like it's just around the corner. It really is. We'll take a break and be back with the next half very shortly indeed. Future pros took a lift to the top of Vertigo to show you a chunky double HE setup you can throw into mid on Vertigo. You will need two Future Pros and two HEs for this one. Future Pro number one, make your way into the front corner of Connector. Aim at the right dot on the left panel and jump to the HE. That's some good damage, but we can do more. Future Pro number two, Hop up onto the wooden panels and aim just inside of the top right corner of this orange mesh. Then just throw the HE. This can be extremely annoying for any T's who want to get a head start on mid control. The faster you throw these nades, the better. But always be prepared for a T who could have had a 6 spawn. No more apologies, trust your abilities, gather the energy. Pull yourself back together and stay enough track forever. Child of the nation, we we'll seek redemption, time for salvation. Today is meant to be a day of victory, time for history. Rebirth's a tendency, fight the entropy, channel your rivalry. You're playing for fortune to come. You're hearing the sound of the drums It's too late to backtrack Go back your back now Keep your feet on the road And stand up You've got what it takes To fight back Don't stop Until you black out Out, out
Now, you've got to ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, where were you when outsiders dropped over 1,100 utility damage, a bombardment of HG grenades and hellfire, Chad, received by FTW? They go down 12 to 3. I've never seen anything like that in terms of grenades in the first half. They just melted them there. It was beautiful work. Uh, looking hot to trot. Uh, the outsiders, some smiles on the face. Even where Flitz, uh, sorry, where Norbert has fallen off the map. Uh, yeah. He's uh, got a number in his name as well. But Flitz has been having a meal of things too. He's absolutely smashed FTW so far today. And rinse and repeat, back towards A. This time a few more bodies from FTW to fight for this. The flash is good, but oh, the goosh looks better. And kick, it's got the opener. We're not Sedona done yet. with a couple of crispies. We're not done at all. This is actually looking very good for the FTW. Bombs. The bomb is down, Norbert is low. And uh, we will see a three on two ensue here. One minute 30 remaining. So. Just looking for any tight angle, seems they could take advantage. This play from Jane right now, he's already starting to investigate B. So if he doesn't find any resistance, he can call Norbert over. They do have that smoke and that Molotov to work with here. But if James just wants to play the seesaw game, right? Try and draw the players back towards the B side. So it gives Norbert a runway in towards A. That's always an option as the investigation begins now. But Odo's found two kills so far in this round and he's going to be looking for the third. James has located him behind the aircon unit. Flash over, James still behind the tall box. There's so much time for this, but look at the boots. There's two players to deal with B now, and it's just James selling a bit of a fake, but was he spotted on the jump by KST? Oh. Did he see Norbert? I don't know. think he saw him. He definitely he did, and know. Norbert's found the key. They should be in, only oh. towards heaven, and it's a ruse. back towards B. Is he starting <laughs> to run back towards B? Is he the really Molotov doing is it to everything, him? isn't it? So now James can tuck himself in, and the crazy spot for the rotations here. He knows B is clear, and presumably is guaranteed at least one kill here spotted so this is a bit of a problem now but still the advantage towards the outsiders what a great masterclass in uh oh! heads up counter strike at this point the jump across it's brave it's bold but it does work out for one speaking of which we have a one-on-one -on -one situation norbert 14 seconds remaining has the bomb but it comes down to the jewels and it will be a jill to pick things up there back and forth we went around the map chad great ideas from outsiders couldn't quite stick the landing there i feel like jane being spotted towards cd spawn had he got a bit deeper perhaps could have caused more of a nuisance but shoulder peaked and at that point the round does fall apart nice jump around towards the catwalk well they want to still try and finish things quick as you like here investments coming through for everybody jane isn't even holding on to residual cash for an awp which tells you he wants to finish this one but on the jump peaks kst very unfortunate not to see norbert there that could have been the key to the round win for outsiders here but uh, Jill, he's been all right in a couple of these angels here. Does confirm a big round and cause for celebration there. Sadoda with a couple of nice USP shots of his own. Now, if they can win this round, FTW, they should be able to convert it to 3-0 starts and start making this squad look a bit more respectable. Game is far from over, and we will see Kuka. Okay, kick it. Where's that going, Chad? That goes up in towards connector, so they can't fight towards middle. So some cheese coming out here today, and the up and over, the mid to B. It seems to be in vogue right now. As Agil, he's done his best to fight off too, but Flitz in, he's got the Famous, and that plan shouldn't be too far behind. Well, well, well. What happens here now? MP9s and the M4 up towards construction they come, Flit. He saw this position before, failed him, but can he make a better go of it this time? Bomb has gone down. One player towards the Jennies, and it looks like they're being proactive once again. Need to be careful of that jump around. We saw it once before. Speaking of jumping over, the DS launches himself towards the bomb bite, and it will be Stododo granting the two versus one. Kick out known for his clutches, but the Tech Nine's not going to do it. Down to 21 points of health, but a decent retake there, even with the interesting Molotovs. Now, you said it's called Connector, so that's stopping the CTs rotating back towards B as they execute towards that mid split, right? So, yeah, anybody who would have been rotating out from that A site wouldn't have been able to contest mid from Elevator Room, right? right? They okay, would have yeah. had to have gone the long route, I believe. So that's how they could be so explosive and not have to worry about that key choke point. Uh, it's curious to see this getting used. You see them launching over mid here. And uh, Jill, again, with two frags, that's a lot of impact here because if he only went one for one in that situation, this post plant would have looked a whole lot different. You have Flip running out of ammo here as well. Harris Dosse with a nice shot and a retake on the B bomb side again. So holding on. I believe uh, Vertigo in history has had a few of those sort of Molotovs that go through walls and floors and stuff. They normally get True. patched, but uh, that's not one I was aware of at least. Cool to see it. And uh, not really much purchased into this next round. Number 18 is Harris Dosse. Opens things up through the smoke and an HG over the top should do some damage. You want a positive here? Yeah, sure. Uh, FTW lost 16-4, 16-4 yesterday and they've already managed to accrue more rounds. Yeah. So an opportunity for 16-5 if more of those shots keep coming. Fame, is the sharp. For the shadow and he's able to pick up the second. The course correct with the aim, not bad, but KST will dispatch of him. Now on three on three, Norbert needs to be worried about the reaggress from Aras Dosse here. 
KST trying to oversee business, so swings out, gets the fight. A nice shot on the MP9, and they keep on kicking. They absolutely do. And, uh, James, I don't think you'll have much to say about this one, but I'm completely wrong here. They know players towards Sandbags as well. He's been dinked in a lot of trouble here. They've got the information that he's low, and they've opted to go back towards B. I suppose they, they know there has to be at least one at the A bomb site, and there's actually two, so B bomb site is completely open to the stage. They're all about this divide and conquer mentality here outside. As you saw yesterday, they're happy to kind of split up or even bait one another to secure rounds. So this time round, James is going to use the advantage of the rotation to get the bomb down, and again, for the third consecutive round, a B retake. So they have some armor. They've got flipped. He's got 24 kills, just to know that. What a game he's having. After 17 rounds of play, a two-on-two -two ensues, and kits are available, but that lack of HP on Aras Dosse is an absolute problem for them. Flit on the backstab as well. He's timed this very well. They'll just be setting up for their retake, and they've pulled the trigger. They're making their way forward, and here we go. Oh, no, oh! the low HP player! He's going for headshots only, Chad. Oh, you hate to see it. One shot to the torso would have taken him down, presumably put him in a great spot, but he misses everything. Going for the precision headshot, he can't confirm who the low HP player is, and it all falls apart. FTW steal the round away, and I said that with bated breath, considering it was a partial buy, but it felt like Flit had all the advantages in the world yeah. there. Yeah, look, Flit, they're using the Tech-9 stationary. We know that's the first mistake, True, traditionally. True, but a run and gun with that one. Nine. Oh, yeah, and, and that's it, right? The, everyone's sitting there, the crosshair's in the right place, the right. bullets just don't connect, so... Bit upsetting there for Flit. He's going to feel very hard done by. But an is there any spinning going on there? Was a CT stationary as well? I think he was pretty stationary. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Aradosa has been watching some of James' highlight videos on YouTube. There, doing was that the Ronaldo or the Messi? I'm not sure which variation was just brought out with that little drop in the face. The early biff towards the ramp again finds us in a mid round with so much time on the clock. Yes, indeed. Another three versus three. Kick her low, thrown over the orb itself, and. Uh, they haven't really got any map control to speak of. So what's the next play here? They still have a lot of grenades in the form of smokes and flashes, a couple of HEs, and Norbert starts to investigate towards middle. Now, in terms of resistance there, he has got Stododo. He'll be holding strong with the AWP, and I think the timings elude him. The thing is, right now, if Stododo stayed forward, you also have this aggressive presence over towards B from Agil, right? So they need to kind of turtle up, and they have. Drop back in these situations on the CT side, if you're full committed to fights and you're not confirming all those kills, you're giving an avenue in. So you want to play for a bit more information, make sure you play with your teammates here. Don't just commit and try and win the round on your lonesome because you know the outsider is going to take their time. They're going to milk this clock down and that's exactly what they're doing here. Silence. Some questions for FTW now and Kickett's going to come around the corner first, low on HP. This is a Jill's kill every day of the week. Is Norbert going to step out for the trade? Don't know if Jill spotted him there, but has delayed him with 20 seconds left. This is looking like it's going to be the seventh round for FTW. Some life now. Yeah, this is a very nice position for Jill. Good smoke. He's not aware that Norbert's residing within it, but I'm sure he knows there's a possibility. Ten seconds, boys. If you want to go, you have to go now. Star. Oh, is it ever? They've actually got a chance to plant here, Chad. It's going down. I can't believe they pulled it off once again. In just the nick of time, in true outsider's fashion, another it goes down B to a retake. one versus one, another B retake. KST this time with no kit. I'm sure there's one available. He has got the smoke and the incendiary, but so much to do here. Flash and AT available for Norbert as well, and the retake begins. So focused on the flank right now, Norbert. Well, that Molly's going to give it away. Burning Decent. hot toes, drops the smoke, or at least, oh, he doesn't oh, have to. It doesn't burn up info. onto the lip. Norbert's been able to just stand here. The tap on the bomb, he doesn't have the kit. The tick now. The bomb is over halfway gone. KST is going to need to grab this kit. There should be time for the defuse, and FTW are going to do it again. They absolutely are. They're coming to life on the CT side. That's actually all the rounds in a row so far. 5-0, looking very, very good indeed. So, the bomb planted. There is a buy available, but... Uh, Still, FTW got a firm grasp on this CT side. This is their map pick, remember? Uh, they will have a decent buy on the CT side. Only one player surviving makes things a bit more problematic for them, but great nice effort from Goldberg. Yeah, yeah, very nice. I guess you need to think this is a full defuse. I've got to get stuck in because exactly. he gave his spot out straight oh. away, right? Because he got ticks by the Molotov. And at that point, that was the game was up. He was rumbled. Yeah, just not enough information for Norbert to operate with. It. A nice one from KSC on the highlight package, but... As you mentioned, still enough money for the buy. Outsiders maybe start to sweat a little bit now, and Aradosse tries his luck, but kick it. He's not going to be tricked. He's not going to be fooled. He 
He's actually going to set Flit up to take another kill. Up the scaff, another body drops, and this A bomb site is under a lot of pressure here. Kick, Flit can just keep pushing the issue. Molly towards headshot, right side smoke, and they're heading back towards B. Yeah, it's a five on three. You can't imagine there's much presence towards the B bomb site considering what they've seen at A ramp, and they would be right. It's absolutely wide open, and uh, in terms of the execution, I think Surely they don't need much more. It. They're just going to throw a couple of flashes in, and uh, surely, yeah, they won't be doing the B retake this time. There's absolutely no chance. The money's too low to even justify the attempt. But that might open the door of opportunity. The bomb has still not been planted. They find one more of those, sure, but Flipped was just there to sell the idea. There was still some presence towards A. Get the backstabs that they did They're retake. They're locked in here, Henry. And you're right. Norbert's coming for them. Yeah, they've completely sealed this. This is actually a huge problem for FTW. If they lose all these guns here, going into the next, because of the nature of how they've been winning these retakes, they're going to have very little to work with. Achille's been noted now over towards the short position. KST trying to buy them some room with an aggressive move, maneuver down the ramp. Zadodo, he doesn't know that he's not long for this world because lurking around the smoke is fame. And they're actually dispatching of outsiders now. I think they've had enough of the hunt. James just wants to hold on to the orb. Yeah, and uh, it's actually not looking too promising on the T side economy. I don't think those were necessarily justified. They do save the orb, so uh, that's one AK that can be dropped at least, but still going to be a little bit problematic now. They'll have $3,900 per player and 13-7 uh, scoreline. They win the round, but Galils are being purchased already. And it's a similar story for FTW losing that previous one as well. Even after winning four rounds in a row, they'll be on to a saved AK, the MP9, and an M4 as well. And uh, his kick out and Flitz just doing God's work here towards the A ramp. Yeah, that, that play, right? If they got all the kills, completely justified. But the fact that they didn't get any of the kills, right? This is where it really hurts because that would have been the backbreaker. FTW would have had to have forced ball with nothing here. Now they at least have something to battle back in against weaker weaponry on the other side. They've opted to keep James Money strong as well. You see, he's got $2,600 residual. Oh, the um, leader at the Orpa, mate. Yeah, you know, exactly. He's always flush for cash. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised considering there's three Galils and a Mac 10 around him. Surely he'd want one AK in no, the mix. He's gone, boys, if you're not going to hit the shot, that's your problem. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I like this boost. Oh, I don't think did he has liked we it too see much, it. though. It's all right. No one saw. Yeah. No one saw it. No oh, one didn't was even really do any damage. No, it was a, it was a sketchy spray. Yeah. It's not the best weapon for the job, but maybe not the worst either. Definitely worth one kill up there, I'd say, but uh, HE grenade doesn't connect, and here's a bit of a oh, precision oh, move from the whoa. CT start, and it's going to be okay, Flit. Flit owning them once again, Chad. Oh, he must be close to the 30 bomb at this time. 28 kills. He just used kills. their one-way smoke against them. Yeah. Just mauled them using that one-way smoke off the top of the headshot sandbag against them, and now walking into the AWP, the trusty Jame. That's what they needed. And that's the backbreaker there. So uh, what was mount number two again? Dust two? Dust two, indeed. And okay. uh, that's the pick of Outsiders, where things presumably don't get much better in the fragging department, as Outsiders have definitely walloped them in that sense. This was the the boost that didn't really work out. Um, the bullets just painted around him. Flip, though, jumping up, as you mentioned, through the smoke, three kills. The Galil just lining them up, knocking them down. And uh, round 22 has to be the full eco. And this is four map points as well. So it wasn't... A uh, shameful performance here from FTW. They didn't really get going, I would say, in the first half, but they've managed to hold their own. The CT side, they've sure. shown they can get string rounds together. Uh, it's always a little bit nerve-wracking going against one of these top teams. And uh, you're the kind of the underdog completely, the, the I guess. The T side approach, you, you need to be doing better than three rounds, right? Exactly. If they were able to get themselves a five on the half, and then you consider the showing that they've had on the CT side with the pistol and the conversion, some nice retakes, keeping it cool. Outsiders trying to rush the finish. You know, you could definitely make a story for this, but... With the scoreline 15 to 7 now, feels like the writing is on the wall. One final conversation to be had here, and we are out of freeze time. Away we go. Yeah, so no diffuse kits, no helmets. Bit of an issue against the M4 and the Galil on the T side. And uh, for Mass, for Stododo, as we'll see that A ramp control being attempted once again. The DS will be forcing the issue through the smokes and flames and uh, actually gets taken down. Kick a bit of an expert on this side of the map. We need to take some notes though, Henry. Our T side vertigo is not great. So I, I hold middle, man. You guys need to uh, sort out the A round. Well, Rush Lee's watching right now. We do need a bit more spam. We need some cheeky one ways. We need yeah, some we disruptive need some more mollies. For sure. And we need some good flashes. So basically, we need everything. Um, well, <laughs> when you put it like that... Uh, aim, strategies, communication, game sense. Yeah. But if you at home want to get activated, use the hashtag ESL Pro League tweet at us, tag Henry and I, let us know how you're watching today. It's a Thursday. What are you getting up to with your Thursday other than the Counter-Strike that's on the screen? Nice little cheeky flash there from James. Doesn't get KST, who can pounce. 
tracking is fine. Steps wide. Flit will punish. And that is a rough situation. Douse there now segregated. He did well to even get one there. The bunny hop he got off going up towards construction made him very difficult to keep track of. Agil, good for two, though. Lovely little transfer towards Fane. He finds the bomb as well. We are not done just yet. The round's still up for contention, though. We've got a three versus two. Agil trying to buy some space with the Molotov and Flit's not having any of it. Jumps past the flames here and helping himself towards the B steps, but I dare say he'll be removed as well. Indeed. And Jill will find his hat trick here. And Jame, with 28 seconds, I dare say he'll just be saving in an See, the, I actually thought that outsiders wrote the fable. I don't even know if it's a fable, but the story, and it's one that you remember, Henry, would have been told it when you're a young lad, uh, of uh, the tortoise and the hare. Okay. But right now, right, and, I, and I thought, you know, they would have written that because the tortoise is actually the hero in this, you know, no, not rushing through it. And, but right now, outside of seeing like the hair, you know, they want to get this done nice and quick. They're rushing a lot of these situations. This game could probably already be over. They've had a lot more like force by rounds just to go for that uppercut to really knock FTW out. So I think they're allowing FTW how to many, a few more rounds. How many races in his career did the Tortoise win? I'm, I know Does he it? won that most notable one, sure. But what other races did he even ever mention? Well, I, look, that, that's my point. That's my question, Jack. It is a good point. Um, I'm not sure how many other races he, he entered. He fluked one, sure, I'll give him that. But it was a one-on-one. -on -one. Have you heard of Stephen Bradbury? <laughs> I think I have, but I don't Stephen know why. Stephen Bradbury back in the Olympic, uh, in the Winter Olympic Games, an ice skater from Australia, made okay. it all the way to the final an race. Australian ice skater. Yeah, we've I've not never a lot heard of, of ice down thing. there. And uh, he was skating around the ring. Everybody else in front of him going so fast, they stacked it. He came through, <laughs> okay, swooped, and I've won the gold. That. So uh, <laughs> Amazing. This could be a Stephen Bradbury moment for FTW right now. I guess you're right. I understand what you were saying for sure, but... But uh, I think, like we always say, Chad, double digits, and I might be interested in the okay. conversation, you know? Um, for now, though, that was a very nice sequence from Ajil. They're not giving up. They're not accepting the defeat. They want to get the double digits. They want to prove themselves to this tournament. Sure, but they probably won't win this map, but every round they do get is experience learnt and uh, a message to other teams out there, as we'll see. A faster approach once more towards this A ramp. Aras Dosse, quiet by his standards. We've been looking to see a bit more from him, but anything but. As Didias lights up one, it is a quick exchange though, as three kills for outsiders will be given back in due course. And at this stage, it's a four versus two, four oh. versus one. And all that build up, Chad, has been completely shut down. We well, are done. Flit's given them the flick here. Yes. Uh, he's just absolutely bamboozled them here today. 34 kills, 131 ADR, three assists, 13 deaths, and he might be able to add one more into any of those columns here. He's so, let's so see. up for it, isn't he? he? Every time we've seen him in these scenarios, he's just heads up, looking he, for the kills. He's really shown to be quite a monster here, right? This team has lost your kinder, but it's all right because Flit is here. This guy with 35 kills in total. What an absolute showing from outsiders here. This is building on the good work they did yesterday against Big. Map number one. That's going to be the pick of FTW. It's over. It's already finished. And we got Dust2 coming up next after the desk. And I'm excited to see how Kassad is feeling. Oh, yeah? Why is that? I don't know. Something about Arsene being sad. So, uh, <laughs> you know, there's all the highlights. That'll be coming everywhere's way very, very soon. See you there.